We're in the National Gallery in Washington looking at a lovely little Fra Filippo Lippi of the Madonna and Child from about 1440. I suppose this just is so lovely to me. The, the beautiful, soft curves of the headdress that she's wearing, framing her face. There's a kind of pathos mm -hmm. in her face. The Madonna is so often shown beautiful but troubled, but here her sense so of fear and sadness comes across in such an incredibly tender and intimate way. Yeah. The way her hand holds him back protectively. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is that terrible poignant moment. And looks out at us too in a sort of way of, of saying, we all know what's yeah. gonna happen. We all know what this means, but look at the price that I pay That's for right. this as a That's mother. Right. A, little a little scorn. The other thing that I see with this is so obviously the early Renaissance, the lessons of the 15th century, Mary becoming so much more human in the ways that we just described, Christ looking so much more like a baby than yeah, he did, yeah. painted a hundred years the earlier. The large head, chubby, not looking like a small man. Right. But the artist here, Lippi, being comfortable with the notion that here we have God, this divine figure, in the body of a child. Now he's looking down and slightly to his right, which suggests the original placement of this painting. And instead of that flat gold background that we would have had a hundred years earlier, Lippi's created this little niche for Mary to occupy. So we have some sense very of space classical. around her, very classical looking. And then that shadow that her body casts to the right, yes. so that we have a sense of real natural light coming from the left, casting a shadow, a sense of her convincing three-dimensionality here. She's not a flat, ethereal figure anymore. That's really interesting. She has that sense of physicality, and this is such an expression of the 15th century in the classical architecture, but also, you're absolutely right, in the way in which the shadow actually follows the, the complex contours of that mm -hmm. architecture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're absolutely The lesson right. of Masaccio. But on the other hand, there's a kind of softness and lyrical quality to Lippi that isn't in Masaccio. So that those beautiful little curves around her face oh, and the, down. The diaphanousness of yeah. that veil is just gorgeous. You can see it's, how Lippi is yeah. Botticelli's teacher. This lovely gold foreshortened halo, although now that gold is disappearing and the halo is disappearing and it's just sort of speckled with gold. In fact, all of the color is almost gem-like with a kind of gentle radiance. I love that he's on this little ledge, like a window ledge. Sometimes almost. that's been read as a reference to the eventual entombment, but she holds him aloft from that tomb. Mm -hmm. you know, she protects him from it with mm -hmm. a kind of pillow. Hard to remember when you're looking at a painting in the museum that it's probably been damaged or suffered some conservation efforts that may have not been as good as we might yeah. have hoped. Well, the but painting's almost 600 years old, yeah. and it's gorgeous. It still is.